Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. When last we left off, Constable Zelna has been sort of let in into Inspector Legrand's uh, plan to trap the Raven's heir, and we were also given a tip-off by Matty to go and search the violin case. He believes that the purse of the Baroness is in the case. I think the violinist is hiding something. But to be sure that Matt was right, I have to get a look in the violin case. How can I do that without the violinist's consent? Did you know he is right there, Zelda? Like, right in front of you. He's like, no, I, I really shouldn't be listening, but he's planning to get into my violin case. Anyway, we need to go and talk to Miss Miller, who will hopefully lend us a hairpin which we can then use to open up the compartment for Lucien, so he can get into his compartment. Let's talk to Miss Miller. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? Hairpins. Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? Yes. It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zell? No. Of course not, madam. Well, go get a hairpin. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, constable. Let us be sure to return this hairpin. I don't want to imply that I'm an expert, but I think that this could pick a normal lock. Probably can. Let us do so. Actually, we are heading the wrong way. We can't pick this lock with the hairpin. We have to pick the lock on the, uh, the bar with the hairpin. The lock on the, um, that cabin is probably too advanced for a hairpin. Let us go behind the bar. I wonder if there is anything else useful behind the bar. Let us use the hairpin. And suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Indeed. The plot thickens. Whoops. That was easier than expected. Well, let's see what's in there. Hmm. Batteries, a toothbrush, shaving brush. But not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm. Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. I think I know which key that is. Also, that's not how you walk, Zelna. Zelna! Zelna, that's not how you walk. Let's try and get him out, shall we? Before he walks like that forever! There we go. There you go, Zelna. Let's head outside. Perhaps the small key can be used for this box. A key to a padlock. I'm sure of that. It's not the first time I've held one. Let us open this. Yep. That's it. There we go. This should help. There we go. What did you get? Ooh, pliers. My grandfather was a blacksmith. When I was a child, I used to play with tongs and hammers in his workshop. My mother never cared for that. She was always worried about my little fingers. But I never hurt myself seriously. I'm quite clever with tools. That's good. We should probably go and return the uh, hairpin. It's the right thing to do. We're going to have to come up with a clever scheme to uh, open up that compartment door, aren't we? Let's give the hairpin back. It was very useful. Thank you for your hairpin, Mrs. Miller. It really got me out of a jam. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And thank you for bringing it back to me. Not everybody would have. I'm a Swiss policeman, madam. I couldn't do otherwise even if I tried. There we go. Off to the next car. We're going to have to do something very clever. We're going to have to push whatever is inside the lock onto the floor. Let's have a look at that lock, shall we? 
You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. <laughs> Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. Indeed. Let us see if we can put the... No, no, we don't want to read the newspaper. That is uh, not what we want to do. We want to do something else. Perhaps we could use the pliers on the lock. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. All right, I'm doing it. There we go, you're in. Now, let Hello? now let's see what you were so worried about, Lucian. I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Oh, bye-bye, hat. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. He was checking for something. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. Hmm. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then, what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. Perhaps the Raven's heir? Dun-dun-da! So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. True. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. He is. He's not entirely being honest with us. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Now, I have a plan. There is a desk set here. Wow. You have a very nice fountain pen. Priacy. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. I cannot, however, take the, um... Can't use the pencil on the window, can I? No. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? Good question. What else is there to examine? Examine the bag. There won't be anything. He won't let us I search really that. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. Indeed. What about the bottles and books? The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. What about the compartment cupboard? Hmm. No. Nothing interesting. Oh, that's a shame. There is nothing else we can do here right now. We can't talk... We could talk to a Professor Lucian, but uh, we will... We, has he got anything to say? Professor Lucian? Yes? Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Well, uh... Good. He is certainly nervous. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. We will be back. Do not worry. We will return. We will definitely return. Definitely. We need to go and get something. And also, our hat is gone. Uh, pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Hello! And there went the steward. Also, here is a glass of toothpicks. That certainly won't be useful in just a moment, like now. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Let's take one. That will actually be very, very useful. And at this point we actually do want to take a piece of paper. If the game will let us. Will the game let us?
Hmm. When I scratch the pencils lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. It will! It will! That's what I was thinking. No pencil sharpener. Might as well use a pair of scissors. Well, we might as well try. Graphite powder is the best we've got. We pretty much have everything we need to solve all of the problems at this part of the game. But first, let us go and uh, go back into the, com the uh, professor's compartment. Also, we st we'll never get our Professor hat back. Lucien. Door is open. Oh, very handy. Hello. How can I help you, Constable Zelda? I'd like to have a look around the compartment. Oh, uh, of course. Thank you. I just want to try fingerprints on the window. Maybe this will work. What are you doing? I'm trying to make what I suspect are fingerprints visible. <laughs> and? Found anything? Unfortunately, no. There are only a couple of fingerprints on the window. It was probably clean before departure, ah. but the prints I can see look like glove marks. Well, wouldn't you expect that? What professional burglar wouldn't wear gloves? Oh? Which makes me wonder what a professional burglar would hope to find in your compartment. I... don't have anything to say You to do. I thought as much. It was worth a try. So there is nothing at all that you can uh, tell us about this. Professor Lucien? Yes? Oh, he's not going to be oh, honest with nothing. me. Well, uh, good. Why are you not going to be honest with me, sir? Ah, the reason Goodbye, why you're not... Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. The reason why you're not going to be honest with me is because we haven't yet solved the purse incident, which means we can't talk to the Baroness yet. And because we can't talk to the Baroness, we are missing information. Let us go this way. And we are still missing our hat. Perhaps we can make a distraction with Matt. Alright, Matt. Tell me now. The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Funny that. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. It's too dangerous. It is too dangerous. No, I'm sorry. That's police work. But I'm a sheriff. But this isn't the Wild West. They'd flay me alive if I dragged a little boy into the investigation. Little boy? You must be joking. Sorry, Sheriff. But your idea about distracting him is good all the same. Yeah. So long. So longer. I'm not going... Ah. He's rubbing his hands a lot. Perhaps he thinks it's cold. Perhaps I can open the window! Aha! Clever thinking, Zelna! Yep. Would you be so kind as to close the window? No, I'd like some fresh air. But I don't want to catch a cold. The window stays open! You're not alone on this train. I want the window open. Now is this going to work? Yep, he's going up to, uh... Swiss politeness doesn't seem to be what it used to be. Ah, he just shut it instantly. I'm not going to catch a cold because of you. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. Okay, fine. That didn't work. The wooden toothpicks are packed into small paper wrappers. Nothing unusual. Maybe I could use the toothpick to keep... Ah, oh, I could keep the window ajar with it. Ha-ha! Put toothpick into the runner. That'll work. The tip of the toothpick is stuck between the window and the runner. Excellent. This'll do it. This'll definitely do it. Yep, same window again. What nerve! I'll complain to your superiors. Okay. Go ahead. Window's not gonna shut this time. Search the violin case. While he could blatantly see you with his peripheral vision. Trust me, he could see you. 
Oh! Well, that's not what you expect to find in a violin case. An old one, but probably still fully functional. A gun? I don't know anything about violins. It may very well be a very expensive violin, or not. Ah! Hey, what are you doing there? Hmm. I was taking your case for safekeeping, since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Ah! Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Aha, uh -huh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Okay! Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I'll report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Yeah... He's not happy anymore. I'll inform the authorities in Venice. They'll decide what to do with him. Oh dear. Good news, though! We have your purse, Baroness! Oh, Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. I did! You did! Out of my way, James. Hello, Baroness! Oh, wonderful. Tremendous work, Inspector. Thank you! Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. Hello. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. Really? One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Oh. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? <laughs> Do you know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Hmm. What about the burglary? Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. Oh? How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Oh! Exhibition? What exhibition? The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. Oh. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention, and that the exhibition will still be a great success. Oh, perhaps. But we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Hmm. What about the passengers? This is the one I'm the most interested in. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the Sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department of the British Museum, he has to be. The whole burglary thing really upset him. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave off you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. Ha! Yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? We have learned something very interesting there. Professor Lucien has been hiding stuff from us. Or should I say, Director Lucien of the Egyptian Department of the British Museum. We'll have to talk to him about that next time. But for now, when, I, when we come back, folks, maybe we'll find Constable Zellner's hat. We are never finding Constable Zellner's hat. He shall be hatless for the whole game. Dun dun dun. Maybe the Raven stole his hat. Probably not. I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.